Y'all give it up for Nathan Myers. Come on, give it up for the Lord. Come on, make some noise in the house for God. Hallelujah. How many came to adore the Lord tonight? Hey, put your hands together right there. Jesus.
this morning. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time in worship. We thank you for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. We thank you for the things that you did do. We thank you, Lord, because you are God and you are good. We ask that you touch our pastor right now. He brings us the words. Let it be a word that is uncompromising and that is uplifting and cleaning to our spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, DC. Three. Three.
on, y'all sing this with me. Listen. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. It reaches to me. You are Strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches me. Come on, y'all. Help me say.
Yeah. Never loses power. Come on, this is Communion Sunday. Sing it for us, praise team. Talk about the blood. The blood of who, y'all? That's a good song right there. Anybody experience the blood this week? Anybody know the power of the blood of Jesus? Come on, sing it. Sing it like you know the blood. will never lose its power. It will never. This time I want you to sing it and think about how God has covered you with his blood. Come on. Come on. Come on. Sing it. Of oh, Jesus. Right there. Type in those comments. The blood of Jesus. Yeah. Of oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh. Listen, we're going to continue that song just a moment, but we want to welcome you once again to Sunday morning worship. We're so glad the blood has kept us all week long. We're so glad that God's favor has rested upon us all week long where we can gather once again. So listen, wherever you are right now, whatever you're watching, whatever device you're watching on, go ahead and share right now this feed. Go ahead and share. Go ahead and share right now because somebody needs to know the power of the blood. Somebody needs to know that God is our strength. And we need to make sure that no matter what takes place in this world, God is still on the throne. And we thank God for his power. We thank God for his strength. We thank him for his grace and mercy. Listen, while you're also doing that, while you're sharing, it's also offering in communion time. That's what we're about to do, offering in communion time. So listen, get ready for your gifts. So go ahead. If God has been good to you today, when we celebrate and remember his death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that shows that Christ gave. You see, Gabe, you ought to give. You ought to give because he loves us so. You ought to give because you're grateful. I thank you for your gifts. And we're thankful that once again that you have done what you're supposed to do on a week-to-week -week basis because you believe God and you believe in the ministry that we're doing. So listen, make sure you go ahead and give at this time. You can look at the Connect tab. You can see the screen and see those wonderful ways you can give, too. You don't have to be a member of our church. Many of you who are just partners, and we don't just say just partners, we're grateful that you're partners. You may not claim membership, but you claim partnership, and we're grateful for you. Listen, while you're doing that and, and you're getting your uh, prayer request ready, go ahead and put your prayer request in the feed right now. Go ahead and put your prayer request. Listen, if you are watching on the website, always remember you can go right there on that Connect tab and you go ahead and type in your prayer request that way. If you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, you know how to do it. Go ahead and handle your business. Type it right there. You can also send it to Pastor Care. We care about you. We can't specifically pray for you if we don't know what to pray for. So make sure you let us know. We want to be there for you. We want to believe God with you through ever what you're going through. And so listen, you got your offering. You got your prayer request going. Let me tell you something else. Thanksgiving is coming up in a few weeks. We have over 300 turkeys that we're going to give away to families for Thanksgiving. And so we want to make sure that if you're in need or you just need, need some food during that time, you need uh, to make sure you have a time with your family. Listen, we, wanna, we don't want you to go without. And so we're going to take care of you. And there's a flyer that you see on the screen. You can see this also on our app. You see it on our website. And you can go ahead and, and go to that website. And when you go to that website, that link that's on that flyer, make sure you choose Disciple Central Community Church. And what's, what's going to happen then on the 21st? You're registering for what's going to take place on the 21st. We're going to take care of you. We're going to take care of you. We're going to make sure if we eat, everybody eat, right? We eat, everybody eat. That's how we roll. And so we want you to make sure that you connect in that way. All right? So listen, uh, 
Another thing before we get to pray, we're so grateful for the ability to live in a democratic society. And we thank God that he has uh, transitioned us in such a way. And so we'll say more things about that in the upcoming times. But we're just grateful uh, that we have a God that we serve. We thank you for, for a country that we live in. And we thank God that God always knows what's best for his people. And so we're grateful for that. And we look forward to doing so many great things. But we still have some work to do. We're going to talk about that in our, our message today uh, as we continue our series uh, that we started just on last week. So listen, bow your heads right now where you are. Uh, we're going to do our prayer request uh, in just a second. And we'll do our communion as well. Listen, go ahead and grab right now whatever food or, or uh, beverage that you have. Uh, go ahead and grab that. We're getting ready to do communion. We're going to do our prayer of our offering, our prayer over our needs, uh, right after we take the Lord's Supper together. Amen? So while you're getting that together, we want to make sure uh, that we are connecting together in the will and the ways of God. So hopefully you have your communion at this moment, and you have that. And we're going to commune together, and then we're going to pray over all of these requests that you have and pray for our nation. Listen, if you have that right now, uh, let's go to bow our heads for a quick prayer and then we'll do our communion. God, thank you for this moment. Please forgive us of our sins so we don't eat or drink unworthily. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible says on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he sat with his disciples in the upper room preparing them for his death, burial, and resurrection. As he sat with them, he took the bread and said, this is my body which is broken for thee. Take thee and eat. Likewise, he took the cup and said, this is my blood, which is shed for thee. Take thee and drink. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. This time, let's bow our heads and we go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for every request and that is going through the feeds right now. We are so, so grateful that we have a God we can call on. We have a God that we can trust. We have a God who sees all and knows all and can handle all that we have going on in our lives. God, we pray right now uh, for this country. We pray, God, for this nation. We thank you, God, for the people in this nation, not just this nation. We pray for this world because you didn't just come for the United States. You came for the whole world. And we thank you, God, for showing us that. We thank you for expressing that. You came, God, to, to touch and heal and deliver every single person who has a request. We thank you, God, that their petition has been made known to you. And so we ask that you touch their bodies, that you touch their lives, that you touch their finances, that you touch their families, that you give them strength, that you remove fear, that you bring power where there's weakness. We thank you, God, for every single request. As a matter of fact, we don't just want to say thank you. We want to give you an extra hallelujah for that because you have done it so many times. We know you can do it again. And God, as we get into your word today, we ask that you speak to us clearly so we can hear your word and be able to weather whatever storms that we face in our lives. We know as long as you're with us, we're going to be all right. It's in Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said amen and amen. Let's give God praise for our praise team today and our band and for all of you who are joining in on this great day. God is certainly a great God. If you would join me in the book of Acts, the book of Acts chapter 27, the book of Acts chapter 27 today. Uh, we are continuing our series. We started uh, on last week. We started a series. God laid it upon my heart uh, to lead us in a time uh, over the next couple of weeks, these last well, this last couple of weeks uh, and the next week uh, to, to deal with something which deals with storms in our lives. All of us have storms in our lives, whether we like it or not. And we talked about before whether you are coming out of a storm, whether you are in a storm or you're about to head into a storm. We need God, and God is a storm chaser, but he also knows how to be in the midst of the storm with us. And so our message series has been entitled, Deal With It, Deal With It weathering life storms. That's the series that we're in. And there's some things you can't run from. There's some stuff you're just going to have to face in this season. You're just going to have to deal with it. It is what it is. Famous person said that it is what it is. And so you just have to deal with it, uh, weathering life storms. If you missed last week's message, please uh, check that out on our uh, social media areas as well as our website. 
and you can make sure you picked it up and order you one of media at dc3online.org. Right now, you should have the book of Acts chapter 27, and we have verses uh, 20, uh, we have verses uh, 18 through 26 that we're going to read today from the New Living Translations. Acts chapter 27, verses 18 through 26. And you ought to have that at this moment. If you have it, just say word, type word right there on the screen. And also let us know where you're watching from. We're so glad to have you wherever God has blessed you to watch from this morning. Uh, we are so glad to have you joining us on this day. Acts chapter 27, st <coughs> start this way in verse 18. It says, the next day, as gale force winds continued to batter the ship, the crew began the car throwing the cargo overboard. The following day, they even took some of the ship's gear and threw it overboard. A terrible storm raged for many days, blotting out the sun and the stars until all, at last all hope was gone. No one had eaten for a long time. Finally, Paul called the crew together and said, Men, you should have listened to me in the first place and not left Crete. You would have avoided all this damage and loss. But take courage. None of you will lose your lives, even though the ship will go down. For last night, an angel of, the God, of, of God, uh, to whom I believe, belong and whom I serve, stood beside me. And he said, don't be afraid, Paul, for you will surely stand trial before Caesar. What's more, God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone sailing with you. So take courage, for I believe God. It will be just as he said, but we will be shipwrecked on an island. I like that verse, verse 25. So take courage, for I believe God. It will be just as he said. I'm going to lift up for a thought in our second sermon of our series today. A thought entitled, Believe God against all odds. Yes, that's somebody's message right there. That's somebody I could stop right there. You, you just need to know to believe, uh, believe God against all odds. Thank you, musicians, for blessing us this day. Believe God against all odds. And as we jump into this word today, I want you to be encouraged and know that God wants you to deal with your storm and not just let your storm deal with you. As I began to prepare for this message today, I began to think about stories that uh, were encouraging of people who had done so many things, but when you look at their life story, you would not have known by looking at the glory of their life that they had gone through so many odds. They had so many odds up against them. Uh, one famous story that I, I always like reflecting on, uh, which I, I found years ago, I had always enjoyed the chicken, but I didn't know the story behind the man. And that is a brother by the name of Colonel Sanders. You know Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders is known as the mogul behind the success of Kentucky Fried Chicken, KFC. Uh, but I want you to know something. If it wasn't, it wasn't always that way for the colonel. I mean, his father died at age five. And then since he was five years old, he had to suffer and go through challenges. And then his mother uh, also had some, some other children. And so he took a job to help raise his younger siblings at the age of 10, 10 years old, having to step into a role of, a, of an older man, having to help take care of his family at the age of 10. But then later on, because he, his mother got married again and his stepfather himself couldn't get along, uh, he started having some problems. Matter of fact, he couldn't keep a job later on, and he dropped out of school only finishing the sixth grade. He had a sixth grade education. And, and over the next 28 years, uh, he went to the military, and, and you know what he did? He lost some more jobs. He, he couldn't stay stable on jobs. He got married. And then he also got divorced. He, he had one of his children at the age of 20 that died. He, and then he got married again. He got a job, and then here's what happened. He, when he was younger, when he was taking care of his younger, younger siblings, he, was, he learned to start cooking at an early age. And now, uh, after 28-plus years later, he's starting to cook again in a restaurant. He started cooking later in life, and he started a restaurant after he had worked for one for a while. 
Listen what happened. He started a restaurant, and guess what happened? He lost the restaurant. And then he bounced back, though. And listen how long it took. By the age of 74, now he had now started this other restaurant, and now he has 17 employees. He had an opportunity to sell his company. He had $2 million, and he sold his company, and here he is at, in his late 70s becoming a millionaire. Against all odds, he kept pressing through. And when we take that same tenacity and we believe God, no matter what we come up against in our lives, we don't run from the storms in our lives. We deal with them and weather them. Why? Once again, because God is on our side. And in our text today, we see that Paul is facing some major odds in a situation he has no control over. And yet he deals with it in the midst of the storm. Paul recognizes he couldn't run from the storm. He couldn't hide from the storm. He had to sail through the storm. He had to face the storm. And that's somebody I'm talking to today. If you find yourself in a situation, you find yourself in life, you find our country, you find this world in a place where there are some storms on the horizon, even some storms that we're in the midst of, and we cannot escape those storms. We got to deal with those storms. God has a way of sometimes putting us in position that we have to face what we don't want to face in order to get to where he wants us to be. And so here's what Paul teaches us today about what he needs to do and what we can do in the midst of storms. Paul is, the, is frequently understood to be one who knows how to survive and believe God as one of the fathers of faith in Scripture. And so he teaches us three things we need to do if we're going to weather the storm against our lives. Here's the first thing we can understand. Uh, Paul uh, lets us know uh, that he is, first off, we're going to weather the storms against, in life against all odds. He, had, he tells us in verses 18 through 20, we need to, number one, believe God no matter how bleak your perspective. That's good right there. Believe God no matter how bleak your perspective. And what do we mean by believe God, no matter how bleak your perspective? And when we begin to jump into this, we can understand what's taking place. And when we look back at chapter 27, the earlier part, we understand and we recognize that the Apostle Paul is in trouble with the government. He's in trouble with the law. He's in trouble because he has been preaching and teaching and leading a life uh, filled with Christian values, filled with following the life of Christ. He's been preaching this gospel, and he got himself in trouble trying to do what's right. And my father used to always say, if getting in trouble, if you get in trouble with God, that same God can get you out of trouble. Paul now is trying to go to Rome because that's where he's going to have to be tried. He had been tried in several places. Now he's going to stand trial before Caesar. That's why he has to get on a ship. They have to take him to where he needs to be. He makes some exchanges, gets on one ship. He's chained the entire time. And as we look at this, we can understand by the time we get to verse 18, what's transpired is while he's on his way, he has some captains and leaders of his ship, a cargo ship that he's now on. And as they're sailing in the midst of this, here's what takes place. A storm comes out on the sea. Storm shows up. And as this storm shows up, we can recognize that now situation seems dire. And that's what we pick up in verse 18. It says, verse 18, the next day, as gale force winds continued to batter the ship, the crew began throwing the cargo overboard. And the following day, they even took some of the ship's gear and threw it overboard. The terrible storm raged for many days, blotting out the sun and the stars until all, at last all hope was gone. All hope was gone. That means that Paul now is in the midst of this. Understand how Paul got in the midst of this. First of all, he got in the midst of this because of what he did right, not because of what he did wrong. And I want somebody right now to stop beating yourself up about the storms that you're facing because sometimes you get in the midst of storms in your life, not because you have taken the wrong turn, but because you've taken the right turn. Not because you took the wrong stand, but because you took the right stand. And understand that sometimes, once again, as we discussed on last week, you can't avoid certain storms. Certain storms are prepared just for you, that, that there are some things you're going to have to go through. And when you go through them, Paul teaches us that you got to believe God no matter how bleak your perspective. 
while Paul is riding out this storm. Chain can't go anywhere. He's a prisoner on a ship, and he didn't do anything wrong, yet and still, here it is. He finds himself while they are on the ship. Here's why the things are looking bleak, because now they're trying to save the ship. They're trying to save themselves. They believe this ship is going to sink if they don't end up making some changes. They recognize their situation is not looking good. It's a, a desperate type situation. And so they begin to throw things overboard. And here's why Paul is saying that you got to believe God no matter how bleak your, your perspective is. Because even though you may be there and you have faith, sometimes it just don't look good. Sometimes you got to let go of some things that you need. I mean, it was a cargo ship after all. They needed the cargo on board to transport it where it needed to go. But if they were going to save this ship, if they were going to have a chance of survival, sometimes you got to let go of some stuff that you actually need or you thought you need, and you got to make some tough decisions even in the midst of the storm. And understand also what's taking place in the text between verses 18 through 20, that they were sailing through this storm, and this storm just would not stop. This storm wouldn't stop. They threw stuff overboard. And even though they threw the stuff overboard, the storm kept coming. The rains kept coming. The winds kept raging. The waves kept tossing. It got more dangerous as they rode. It got, it got more dangerous as they rode through the storm. It got more dangerous as they sailed through the storm. And here it is. We understand that the storm just would not pass. And we talked about it last week as well that sometimes certain storms just won't pass. I know somebody right now is just wishing that certain things would be over. I know you want COVID to be over. I know you want some situations in your life to be over. I know you want your family member to stop suffering. I know that you want the, the whole job process just to be over. You just want one. I know that you're tired of looking for someone that's going to come into your life or you go into their life and it's going to be at peace. I understand that there are some storms and some challenges and some frustrations that come along and your perspective can can get bleak. As a matter of fact, it can be just like Paul is in this storm, that the terrible storm raged for many days, and listen what it does. It blots out the sun and the stars until all hope was lost. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? Where, where even while you were riding, it seems even your daytime and your nighttime match where well, they're both dark, that you can't see your way and you still got to make moves. I'm trying to help somebody today. You can't see where you're going, but you still got to make progress. You got to sail. You got to ride right through it. And even though you can't control your situation, even though you're at the hands of somebody else sometimes, you still got to roll through the storm. No matter how dark it gets, no matter how bleak it gets, your perspective can be shifted. Shattered. Your perspective can be hindered, but you still got to believe no matter what that God is with you in the midst of the storm. And I know somebody right there, you're there. And I want you to recognize you got to deal with it. You got to deal with it. You got to believe God against all odds. The odds are up against Paul. The odds are up against the ship, but they still got to keep selling. Second thing Paul teaches us in the text is found right here in verse 21. And what he tells us, the second thing we need to recognize and understand if we're going to weather the storms and deal with them and believe God against all odds is simply this. Believe God in the midst of drama that could have been prevented. Can I say it again? You got to believe God in the midst of drama that could have been prevented. What are you talking about, Pastor? Let me help you out. I told you they were sailing. They were going through the storm. They were riding through the storm. Paul is in chains. Paul can't control it. There's a captain. There's a leader of the ship. There are some people in control of the ship. And we find in verse 21, as things got bleak and they did all they could by throwing stuff overboard, look what happens in verse 21. It says, no one had eaten for a long time. And finally, Paul called the crew together, called the crew together and said, men, you should have listened to me in the first place and not left Creek. You would have avoided all this damage and loss. Oh, my God. Have you ever been in a situation where you tried to tell somebody something and they just wouldn't listen. Here's what Paul is saying. Paul has told them earlier, hey, hey, I don't think we should leave Crete right now. I think there's a storm of brewing. I don't think we can handle this storm, and, and you're the ones in control. I'm just a passenger on this place, and I want to let you know that even though I might not 
fly, uh, 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 carry, uh, lead the ship right now, I want you to understand I sense something. I see something. I know something. I know something in my spirit. I need you to pay attention because the storm is coming. And here it is. You have people who are in leadership on this ship who does not listen to Paul because they don't recognize him as who he's supposed to be in their lives. They just see a prisoner. And that's why you got to be careful. Be careful of how you judge people. Just because they don't have your title and your position don't mean they don't have power. Does not mean that they don't hear a word, of a word from God. Doesn't mean that they don't have wisdom that you ought to listen to. As a matter of fact, you can learn even from a fool. Be careful of who you dismiss in the midst of your situation lest you find yourself in a storm just like these people. But the other side of that is sometimes you have to ride through storms with people because they didn't listen to you and you could have avoided so much drama in your life. I know I'm talking to somebody right now that if somebody would have listened to you, if they would have found out that you actually had some kind of sense, that you had some kind of wisdom, then there are some things that could have been prevented and some things that could have been avoided. But because you had poor listening skills, somebody had poor listening skills, skills in your life, then there are so much loss and damage that could have been prevented. Oh, you still not understanding? I mean, if you had leadership that would have listened to a doctor when they are not a doctor, and if they would have listened to a Dr. Fauci, there could have been so much loss and so much damage avoided. I mean, there could have been lives not lost due to COVID if somebody would have listened. There could have been jobs not lost if somebody would have listened. There could have been graduations held if somebody would have listened. There could have been memories being made in a positive way rather than a negative way if somebody would have listened. There could have been businesses still open and opening sooner if somebody would have listened. And if they would themselves would have listened and wore masks, they wouldn't have caught COVID if somebody would have listened. We think they did. And understand this, at the end of the day, you got to recognize that sometimes the storms that you're sailing through, that you got to sail through them and you got to be connected because you can't leave that job because you need your paycheck. You can't leave that house. You can't leave that neighborhood. You can't leave that situation. You can't leave that family and you got to ride through it because those are the connections and the season that God has you in and you got to suffer the consequences and lose some stuff and because you are connected with people who won't listen. Oh my God, we got to make sure that sometimes we know that we are not in control of our situation. We got to ride along with other people, and that's a frustrating situation. But the, the deal is, Paul says, no matter what you find yourself in, no matter who did not listen, if you're still alive, God is still on the throne, and that means you still have a chance, even if it wasn't your fault, and you believe God in the midst of the storm, no matter what gets damaged, no matter what you lose, you still got to believe God, even when drama could have been prevented. And well, I'm done. I'm out of your way. Final thing we see in our text today, not only do you believe God, no matter how bleak his perspective is. That's what first thing he teaches us, and believe God in the midst of drama that could have been prevented. But he says, if you're going to deal with your storm, if you're going to weather your storm, if you're going to believe God in the storm, here's what we find in verse number 22 through 26. Oh, let me help you out real quick. Can I find somebody to read with me in verse 22? Listen to what he says. He says, first of all, in verse 22, no, uh, verse 22, he says here in the text, but take courage None of you will lose your lives. All right, let me tell you what number three is. I got to tell you this before I shout. Third thing we see in the text, he says, if you're going to make it through this, if you're going to deal with this storm, you got to believe that God will protect you until you fulfill your purpose. Let me say it again. You got to believe that God will protect you until you fulfill your purpose. I told you, Paul assignment because he is now in chains is now to go be tried by Caesar in Rome. And I want to let you somebody know right now that, that you got to recognize no matter what chains you find yourself in, when God has an assignment on your life, no storm can end it until God has finished what he wants to do in your life. Let me tell you something right now. I want to help somebody understand by looking in the text today. When you look in that text right now, You'll see it right there. It says in verse 22 again that Paul says, Take courage. None of you will lose your lives. 
Can I tell you that God will protect you until you fulfill your purpose? As a matter of fact, you ought to type in, I'm covered by the blood. <laughs> Can I tell you right now, when you know you have a purpose in your life, you ought to recognize that when God has his hand on you, it ain't a weapon that the enemy can bring up against you because God is not through using you. God is not through blessing you. Can I tell you what's happening? Well, as we see in verse 22, here's what Paul does. Paul prophesies to the folk that's riding with him. Now, I told you, he's a prisoner like some other ones on the ship. He's in chains, and he's talking to the folk leading the ship. He called the meeting, and he had to let them know. He says, you wouldn't listen to me when I told you not to come this way. But chill. Don't worry about it. We're in a storm, but you got to recognize everything's going to be all right. So what he starts doing, he starts prophesying to those who are riding with him. Can I tell you what's taking place? Paul says, I might be in these chains, but I'm the only one on here free. I'm free because I know that God has a word in my belly. He says, don't you worry about this ship going down while I'm on it and losing your life because I got to go somewhere. I wish I could help, help your neighbor right now and say, neighbor, I, I got to go somewhere. If you're riding with me, chill. God's got something he wants to do in my life. And I can't go down until he's finished with what he wants to do in my life. He began to prophesy to everybody around him. I wish you ought to prophesy to your family. You ought to prophesy on your job. You ought to prophesy when you get on a plane and say, y'all chill. God already talked to me. We can't stop yet until I get off of this plane because God got stuff he's going to do in my life. So if you ride it with me, it ain't time for me to leave here. I still have stuff to do. But when I look at the text, I begin to look at this text and I begin to see that he says not only prophesy to the those riding with you, but he says testify about the word God gave you. Do I have somebody? If you look in the text, he says, I got a testimony. He says in verse 23, he says, for last night, an angel of God, the God to whom I belong and the God to whom I serve, stood beside me. Do I have somebody who understands what he's saying? He said, last night, in the midst of the storm, while y'all was nervous, while y'all were trying to sleep, while y'all were biting your fingernails, I was up and God sent an angel and he sent an angel and he sent an angel with a word. And can I tell you what the angel did? The angel, he stood beside me. He stood beside me because he needed some, I needed some support. And he said, if they can't support you, I'll show up in the midst of your storm and I'll walk beside you. I'll stand beside you because I am, I'm with you in the midst of your storm. Do I have somebody who can look at the text and recognize that you might be in a storm, but you got the Father, you got the Son, you got the Holy Ghost. And if you feel by yourself, God knows how to send the right folk at the right time to do the right thing, to just have his presence in your life, in the midst of the storm. But not only that, he says, this is what the, mess, the, the messenger said. He said, don't be afraid. Can I tell you what he said? He said, not only did he stand with me, but he spoke into my spirit. He calmed my fears. And can I tell somebody in the midst of your storm, peace, relax. The Lord 
is in your storm. The Lord is on your boat. The Lord is in your presence. And what he's telling you, that if I'm standing with you, you ain't got to worry. You ain't got to be afraid. And then he says, he says, don't be afraid for you will surely stand trial before Caesar. What's more, God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone sailing with you. Do I have somebody who can recognize that God won't just keep you? He'll keep your family. He'll keep your co-workers. He'll keep your friends. He'll also keep your enemies when he got something to do in your life. Do I have somebody who says, I thank God that he spoke into my fear, but then he spoke into my future, that no matter what storms may rage, no matter what winds may blow, no matter what challenges I face, I will believe God. No matter what person gets elected, I will believe God. No matter what enemy comes my way, I will believe God. Let me tell you, you got to believe him no matter what. If you have somewhere to go, that doesn't mean that won't be challenging because the text says you will get to your place. You will get to your destination. You're still going to have some challenges. You're still going to have some problems, but I will get you to the right place. Do I have somebody who knows that you got to go through in order to get through? But believe God, even though you may lose some things, you still going to make it. Believe God, even though you may face some fear, keep on going. Believe God, even though you may have to shed tears in the midnight hour. Believe God, even though you might have to fight your doubts. Believe God, even though you don't have control. Believe God and know that all things work together for the good of them. Believe God that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So what do you do? Ride it out so the storms may rage. Ride it out so the billows may roll. Ride it out so the lightning may flash. Ride it out so they walk away from you. Ride it out so you don't know what's going to happen. Ride it out. You're sick of your situation. Believe God. Because after a while, by and by, God will show up and show out in the midst of your situation. You ought to throw your head back and shout hallelujah. I believe God builds a lake. I believe God wrong diagnosis. I believe God I need a breakthrough. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Believe God. Believe God. Because he's never, ever failed you yet. Oh, yes. You, he's never failed you yet. I mean, he told the disciples, destroy this temple. He told them, the people that were talking to him, destroy this temple. In three days, I'm going to raise it up. He told his disciples, I'm going to die, but I'll be back. I'll tell you what he did. He got up on Sunday morning, believe God. In your storm, believe God. Now, I want you to understand this. Why are you thinking about this? Paul was being spared for purpose. Oh, my God. The power of knowing what you're called to do. You can believe God can preserve you. You can believe God can protect you. You can believe God can keep you until your purpose is fulfilled. That's why it's important to walk with God every step of the way. Be with Him every step of the way. And understand, when you trust Him, He'll take care of you. 
You keep reading that text. He says, you're going to get the wrong. Your ship going to wreck on the way. You're going to lose the ship. God told him, you're going to lose the ship. There's some stuff you're going to lose along the way. But you have your life. And I'll get you where you need to go. Aren't you glad? Listen, Jesus got up. He died. If you need a relationship with Christ, you need to believe God. You need to join church. Believe God. You need a fresh start. Believe God. You can join church right now. You can join church right there online. You ain't waiting on God. God waiting on you. Ain't no perfect church because you ain't perfect. We're not perfect, but we serve a perfect God. You can accept Christ. Join church. Rededicate your life right now. Go ahead and make that decision. Go ahead and make that decision right now. They're waiting on you. Listen, I pray things about to minister as we get ready to leave this place today. Weather your storm. Deal with it. You can't run from everything. Sometimes you got to sail through and believe God. I'm cheering for you. I'm praying for you. Tell God, I need you to speak to my heart because I'll know what to do next. God bless you. I know. 